first of all, I want to thank the organizers for putting on this event today. I look forward to the uh, event in Waterloo as well. Um, today uh, reminded me of uh, my activity during the campaign. Uh, since August 1st, I've been hosting weekly town hall meetings uh, throughout the region. And our meetings are very similar to the types of activity that we've uh, carried out here today. We come together, we have conversations about a variety of issues, whatever issue somebody wants to speak about, and the interaction is sometimes, you know, uh, sometimes, uh, I'm not going to say uh, antagonistic, but sometimes we have a good, good debate back and forth because, you know, in any room or anywhere where you have two or more people, you're going to have some disagreements on issues. You're never going to have 100% agreement on the issues. And it's out of those discussions of disagreement uh, or counterpoints that really we can try to come to a solution because that's the great art of a politician is to try to find that grand compromise that uh, doesn't uh, affect too many people. Um, so today uh, we talked about a number of issues. The first issue that we had uh, to talk about was affordable housing. And I think everyone in the room here can agree that affordable housing is probably the single biggest issue facing uh, our community, facing government in the next term of office. It is. It has to be the cause of our time to try to improve the ability for people to find housing, uh, supportive housing, affordable housing units, rental supplements, whatever that takes. The interesting part of the discussion that we had was with respect to uh, trying to bring developers into the process and the the conflict that comes up when social agencies and government and developers with a profit motive come into the mix and how do you overcome that and that's not going to be an easy solution but it's certainly something that um, government regional government and the local municipalities will have to work on other issues that we talked about uh, were safe consumption sites and uh, there was a general agreement that if the province is unable to step forward to support the funding, we have to see what we can do to fund safe consumption sites in our community, particularly in the red zone, but ensure that we have the wraparound services uh, with respect to that. But the one thing I noted was the, uh, the warming center, the shelter that you here provide uh, for people, especially when we had the out of the cold issues that occurred uh, some uh, recently where they had to be shut down. And I commend uh, the community here for stepping forward to provide that service. The only way it's all going to work out is where government comes together with uh, community advocates, social agencies, etc., to try and resolve it. And during my term as regional chair, I intend to continue the town hall concept to reach out and have meaningful dialogue with people such as yourself to understand what the issues are, to learn about your concerns, and together try to find solutions so we can move forward. So thank you very much. Zero seconds. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for having us here today, and I want to thank the organizers right off the hop, and also all of you for coming to be informed electorate. You know, the voter turnout at municipal um, elections is between uh, 30 and 40 percent, and yet the decisions we make at the regional level and the lower tier are things that impact your family almost the next day. It was Chris at one of the tables that reminded me that my start in politics was act actually as activism um, in the school board. And I'd like to take that activism and the skills that I have learned over the years and bring it to bear on the uh, role of uh, regional chair. Good leadership is not about scoring debating points. It's about being accountable to you, the electorate. And that's why I am uh, saying that um, should I be elected, I would create a regional chair's advisory panel to meet quarterly to make sure that the direction that we are headed in from a policy perspective at the regional government resonates with our constituents. I believe in cl inclusivity, inclusivity and prosperity for all, but prosperity takes different forms depending on where you are in our community. I have two noteworthy observations that I have made over the last four years being a member of regional council. One is that the global competition for how we find our place in the world is very keen, and I find, found that different and emerging. We need to be able to compete to attract talent. We need to make sure that we have um, an LRT in place and that we hook up with all day two-way go and high-speed rail. And to do that, you have to find common ground with both the provincial government and the federal government. And I would tell you that that is something that I've demonstrated I'm able to do. The other issue was the opioid crisis. 
and we talked about it at one of the tables that I was at. Everyone deserves to feel safe in our community. Investment in police and emergency responders are very important. But we have a template of cooperation through the Community Safety Crime Prevention Council as well as the opioid um, crisis um, response team. All of those bring everybody to the table to make sure that we're going to find long-term solutions for the underlying causes, whether it's homelessness, affordable housing, or the drug strategy. We have to invest in mental health. I'm watching the yellow tickets here. Quite simply, I offer you in my bid as regional chair not a laundry list of um, promises, but I will make you two commitments, and that is that I will reflect your priorities in the policies that go forward at Regional Council, and that I will be accountable to you. Again, thank you for coming to be informed, and I really did value the conversations. It's a real pleasure to be here. I remember attending a number of these going back over the years, and it's always so fabulous to hear all the different points of view and different concerns that you all have, and you always really do learn something um, at these sessions. So thank you very much for putting it all together. You know, as a region here, we've done really well on an economic basis. We've grown well, we've got a good place as a growth strategy in place. There's a plan with the intensification of the cores, the hard country sideline, to have a real def def definition between the, 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 city, the city and the urban areas and the countryside areas and things like that. So a lot of those things have done really well, and part of that is the LRT and all those type of things. But you really start seeing the cracks that, that, that are starting to appear in our social fabric. So there's so many, and we, and we see that here. So some of the symptoms of that is, of course, the RPA crisis, some of the mental health challenges that we're seeing and, re and reading about, the issues with affordable housing. Those things are all starting to come to the forefront. And, and, and so when I take a step back and take a step back and says, so what's, what's really different here? What do we really have to change to, to make that happen? And, and so as that fabric society is pulling apart, what can the region do to try to put those and knit that back together again? And I look at back 40, 50 years ago, where we started, we as communities started spending a lot of money on our recreational facilities. We started putting money into hockey rinks and, and all, those type, all those type of things. And at that time there was a debate, why, why are we doing this? We look back now and said, well that's very important. So I look back now and say, we're seeing all these challenges from our community being pulled apart. Perhaps we should be making a substantial, fundamental investment in our social infrastructure. Just like we did 50 years ago in our recreational type of act, act, act activities. So we can start to build that cohesion, start to build those neighborhood community feelings, start to pro provide those safety nets, those social safety nets that we have in our community. And that's a fundamental activity that we have to take a look at. So that's a fundamental change. That includes some of the arts type of activities as well. And then you can start putting into context how we deal with the social, how we deal with the, 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 the housing issues, the, the, the affordable housing issues. So I've been talking quite a bit to a lot of frontline workers and things like that. And right now, a lot of our social services are very siloized. They're all siloed. Everybody's doing a great job in their own individual areas. But where's the cohesive strategy that's finally come together on that? And just like in the, in the high tech sector, we have an ecosystem of companies, of, of agencies to support the incubators, to the people who want to start up. And all those agencies, they all provide a very similar service, but no one would dream of cutting their funding or merging them all. And so it's that type of ecosystem, a social health ecosystem that we really have to develop at the region. And that's as chair, as your chair, that's a fundamental shift that I'd like to make in our, in our community here to create that social services ecosystem where we can all work together on the fundamental plan. So thank you very much.